welcome students i hope you all are doing fine so we had stopped we had completed the third chapter last time that was emerging trends so these are some question answers that i want you all to solve and write down in your notebooks list some of the cloud based services that you are using at present question 2 what do you understand by internet of things and list some of its potential applications write short short notes on big uh, data and its characteristics and cloud computing explain the following with their application artificial intelligence and machine learning differentiate between cloud computing and grid computing with suitable examples justify the statement storage of data is cost effective and time saving in cloud computing what is on demand service and how is it provided in cloud computing write examples of government provided cloud computing platform and the large scale private cloud service providers and also the services that they provide a company interested in cloud computing is looking for a provider who offers a set of basic services such as virtual server provisioning and on demand storage that can be combined into a platform for deploying and running customized application what type of cloud computing model fits these requirements if the government plans to make a smart school by applying iot that's internet of things concept how can each of the following be implemented in order to transform a school into an internet of things enabled smart school so how will you implement each of this so that a normal school become an iot enabled smart school e textbook smart board online test wifi sensors on classroom doors sensors in buses to monitor their location and variables for attendance in the morning five friends plan to try a startup but they have limited budget and limited computer infrastructure how can they avail the benefits of cloud services to launch their platform to launch their startup governments provide various scholarships to students of different classes prepare a report on how blockchain technology can be used to promote accountability transparency and efficiency in distribution of scholarship how are iot and wot related okay this is column a and column b i want you all to match it you got a reminder to take a medication you got an sms alert that you forgot to lock the door you got an sms alert that parking space is available near your block you turned off the led tv from your wrist watch which of this goes with which of the other 
these are your questions this is your homework now we will start with a new chapter today computational thinking and getting started with python this is the base for your 11 standard this is also the base for your programming any programming will require you to have a computational thinking computers help us solve problems but before a problem can be tackled we need to understand the problem and the ways to solve it irrespective of the language being used the first and the foremost thing while writing any program is to analyze the problem well and then to try and solve it in a logical manner the process of writing a program is called programming so when we write a program we need to first clearly understand the problem then follow it by its solution otherwise we can end up writing incorrect or inefficient flow codes when we write a program we are writing a set of instructions to solve a problem problem that involves data processing the instructions are executed by the computer to solve the problem if the instructions are correct and also given in the correct sequence only and only then will the problem be solved otherwise if the instructions are incorrect or given in the wrong sequence the problem will not be solved it will be incorrect therefore writing correct instructions in correct sequence is extremely important so before we start writing a program the steps for solving a program should be very clear in our mind if we start writing a program without knowing how to solve the problem then we can never write the correct program this leads us to the concept of computational thinking computational is the think thinking computational thinking is the process of approaching a problem in a systematic manner and creating and expressing a solution such that it can be carried out by a computer it's the thought process involved in formulating a problem and expressing its solutions in a way that a man or machine can effectively carry out to write any program anywhere we need to first think computationally we need to think about the problem and its solution and then we should write that program in a programming language each and every day we do computational thinking we think of actions and decisions so if you want to make yourself a cup of tea or coffee you're taking a computational decision whether you want to buy a car or not whether you want to change your job whether you want to move to another city whether you want to buy a house which which college or school you want to get enrolled in which stream will you select which book you want to read which app you are using these are all decisions that you have made and while making these decisions you have gone through a certain process 
you have analyzed and then you have taken a decision whether you want to drink tea or coffee you will analyze you will think okay i don't like coffee so obviously your answer will be tea that's because you analyzed it or you will analyze i don't like tea and i want to have coffee or you will say i was feeling very sleepy and i need caffeine so you will go for coffee so there will be multiple reasons for you to have selected a decision but all decisions that you reach you will always be doing computational thinking you are always thinking but now i will teach you all how we do computational thinking which is nothing but logical thinking so computational thinking allows us to take a complex problem understand what it is and develop possible solution we can present these problems in a way that a computer a human or both of them can understand the process of planning and reaching the goal involves computational thinking computational thinking involves taking a complex problem and breaking it down into a series of small but more manageable problem this is called as decomposition taking a complex problem and breaking it down into a series of small or more manageable problems each of these small problems can be looked at individually considering how similar problems they are with each other and find some sort of a pattern in them that is called as pattern recognition once you have to look at the pattern when we focus only on the important details and ignore the irrelevant information this is called abstraction simple rules or steps to solve each of the small problems is called an algorithm these and all are the components of computational thinking decomposition pattern recognition abstraction and algorithm decomposition is breaking the complex problem down into small easily manageable simpler problems pattern recognition is when you study each of those problems individually and find repeated patterns overlapping all of these programs abstraction is removing unfiltered is is filtering the data and remove and focusing on only the data that you want and you need at that time while ignoring all the irrelevant details of the program and finally after abstraction and after you have focused on only the data required and you have found a solution which when applied to one small problem can be repeatedly applied to each small problem and finally the entire complex problem is solved this is called designing an algorithm where we will write down this solution in a point to point step by step manner in the correct sequence so with this i would like to show you one tiny video which is very interesting please stay with me so this is a very good explanation of all the components of computational thinking imagine you are asked to solve a complex problem and to make things even more challenging you cannot use the tools you normally use to help solve the problem sounds pretty difficult right without a strategy it certainly would be today we are going to demonstrate 
common process for solving complex problems known as computational thinking. Computational thinking is the thought process involved in formulating a problem and expressing its solution in such a way that a computer, human, or machine can effectively carry it out. Computational thinking involves four steps. Step one of the computational thinking process is decomposition. Decomposition involves breaking a complex problem down into smaller, more manageable parts. For example, take this math problem. Find the sum of all numbers between 1 and 200. How can we break this problem down into smaller equations? 1 plus 2 equals 3. 3 plus 4 equals 7. 5 plus 6 equals 11. 7 plus 8 equals 15. This is going to take forever, and it's really hard to keep track of in your head. There's got to be a better way. Let's try a different set of combinations. 200 plus 1 equals 201. 199 plus 2 equals 201. 198 plus 3 equals 201, etc. Step 2 of the computational thinking process is pattern recognition. Identifying patterns or trends within a problem. Let's return to the problem we started in step 1. Find the sum of all numbers between 1 and 200. What pattern do we see here? If we take the sum of the high number and the low number, we get 201. And all the other pairs have the same sum. We need to figure out how many times the 201 pattern repeats. You could count all the pairs, which would take a long time, or take the high number and just divide it by 2. 200 divided by 2 equals 100 pairs. If the sum of each pair is 201 and we have 100 pairs, we can now determine the sum of all numbers between 1 and 200. Step 3 of the computational thinking process is abstraction. Abstraction suggests we identify specific similarities and differences among similar problems to work toward a solution. In our original problem, we had to find the sum of all numbers between 1 and 200. Let's look for similarities and differences. All the pairs have the same sum, so we can get rid of these. Now, if we focus only on the important details, we see that we can express the problem as an equation. 200 plus 1 tells us the sum of each pair. 200 divided by 2 tells us the number of pairs. Multiply them together, and we find that the sum of all numbers between 1 and 200 is 20,100. The fourth and final step of the computational thinking process is algorithm design. Algorithm design involves developing step-by-step -step instructions for solving the problem, which you can use again to solve similar problems. In our original problem, we had to find the sum of all numbers between 1 and 200. Step 1. Find the sum of 200 plus 1. 200 plus 1 equals 201. Step 2. Find the quotient of 200 divided by 2. 200 divided by 2 equals 100. Step 3. Multiply the answers from step 1 and step 2 together. 201 times 100 equals 20,100. This algorithm can be used to find the sum of all numbers between 1 and any number. Let's see how it works with 1,000. Erase the 200. Now find the sum of all numbers between 1 and 1,000. 1,000 plus 1, 1,000 divided by 2, multiply them together, 
and we end up with 500,500. Computational thinking can be used to solve problems that may previously have seemed impossible to solve. It is a powerful skill. You can use it for life. So that was computational thinking. How you all saw that finding a common solution that can be used in all. It was not only about sum of numbers from 1 to 100. But after finding the solution, they also found the numbers, sum of numbers from 1 to 1000. Saw so how they used decomposition to break down data. Then they used pattern recognition to find a repeated pattern. Then we use abstraction to remove all the irrelevant information. And then finally, you find a solution and you write it down in a stepwise, step-to-step -step manner to create an algorithm. This is called computational thinking. Next class, we will talk about each of these components in detail. We will talk about Python and then we will start learning Python. Till then, stay home, stay safe, take care and keep learning.